Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you DBS applications using DSS Studio. First of all, a disclaimer, the following video is not intended for clinical use. DSS Studio is not certified for um, clinical application. So make sure that you use it for simulation educational purpose. If you use it, uh, on patient, you may need to have a research IRB. So here today, I'm going to show you DBS planning using DSS Studio. The data we are going to use could be um, FGA TRR, could be T1 or T2 weight the image. Um, as long as we have a structural image, then DSS Studio could use it for planning. You don't necessarily need to have a DWI, which is for fiber tracking. And here for DBS, um, DSS Studio will only take a structural image. So just to show you what the data looks like, the data I'm going to use in this video, the first one is a series of Daikon image. Those Daikon images will be similar to what you get from the scanner. Usually when you get it from the scanner, there won't be file name or file extension. You may need to rename it first. There are several tools to do it. Um, for example, like um, you can convert it using um, DCN to MII to convert it to a NIPT format. So NIPT format would be the format we usually work with. But for a lot of clinical applications, like surgical navigation system, we will still use DICOM. So today I just, I will start with an example using DICOM. And the first step, we will, we need to parse the DICOM file. You start the SS Studio. And usually the first step I would do is rename those DICOM. So here I just set that the folder containing all the file. So load this folder is where I store all the DICOM files in. Just select this folder. And you see DSS Studio would create a new folder and rename DICOM according to the sequence. So here there's only one sequence showing up. That's the T2 um, sequence. If you have multiple sequence and all the DICOM file, you will be sorted according to the different sequence. And then the, the corresponding DICOM files will be placed under each of the folder. Then the next step is converting DICOMs to Nifty, which is under the batch processing step B1C. Click on this bottom and then set that the one that just generated by DSS Studio after you rename those DICOM file. Set that a folder and quickly DSS Studio will create a Nifty file, which is converted from those DICOM images. And you can check what this Nifty file looks like. You can drag it in DSS Studio. It will open up showing all the information or you can open it under the tool tab. The old one view image bottom, you can click on it and open this Nifty file. It will show up the same. So as we can see here, the image resolution is not isotropic. The through plane is much thicker and four millimeter. Usually for DBS, we would like to have an isotropic resolution. Um, ideally like the T1 at one millimeter or even higher resolution. So one trick we could do here if say if you have an image that's not isotropic, we could regrade it and then resample the data into isotropic resolution. And this will avoid problems if you have a resolution difference at different dimension. As you can see here, you try to interpolate, but still there is a lower resolution showing here. Now you can see the resolution becomes one millimeter isotropic. Then we could save it back, click on save as, 
and then save it back to the original file. So those pre-processing steps make sure that you will have the data we needed for DBS planning using DSS Studio. So once we created the Nifty file, then what we, we can open it here under the Diffusion My Analysis tab. Here we don't really need to use like a detailed eye data. Um, we can jump through to the step T3 using the visualization interface. So click on it and then select the file. But the default file extension is DWI generated fifth file. We change it here to Nifty so that the Nifty file we created will show us up and then we can open it. So here's a file open in DSS Studio. So it's only the T2. Um, the direction at SEO direction is much lower, but that's okay. We could still use this as an example. The next step we are going to do is register this image with the template so that we could bring in atlas of subcortical nuclei. So the things, only things you need to do is click on this button at this. So make sure that you have the most updated DSS Studio before doing this step, because older version before June uh, 2023 may not support the function to register those T2 only image with the template. So make sure you update DSS Studio before doing this step. Click on it. Yes, a studio will take some time to register this image with a built-in T2 or either T1 template so that we can bring in all the others back into the subject space. This step will take a while. And once complete, yes, a studio will memorize the warping field and then helping us do all the following analysis. So now the registration is complete. Then what we could do is we could set a different atlas here. So the, my favorite here would be the brain segmentation. Here just showing different regions. And then you can set that all of them at the end. So this step will be a quality check to see if the registration is doing a good job. As we can see here, in your version, the default setting, may have different settings. So make sure you restore all the default settings. So default setting here may, sh may show up like a mask, but you could change it to the edges on the right upper corner. Under region window, change the show it edges to on. Then we could check slide by slide, see if the restriction is okay. Um. Since this is not like a segmentation, so you could see the gyro folding doesn't really match well. Um, that's it. quite common because uh, each individual brain has a, their unique cell kind of drivers. And the things we were most interested in are subcortical structures. So as you can see here, the alignment seems to be okay. Um, even some of the region may not, may be what off by one or two people. So based on this registration results, we could bring in any building addressing. So for example, like salamus or subsalamic nuclei, we can bring in all different regions. Um, for example, like the salamus left, we could just add it in, and then we could see it on the right. So now we have those regions in. Um, one of the features we would like to use is could we output some of the regions into surgical navigation system? So to do this, say for example, we want to output the subsynamic nuclei into a DICOM file. So what we could do is, first of all, let's just set that only the one we would like to have. So here, I said that a sub subsynamic nuclei. As you can see here, it's just a tiny structure showing up. 
there's a right hand right side and left left side i'll just merge two of them together and the next step i'm going to do is try to write this region back to the DICOM file so to write back to the DICOM file we need to insert DICOM here in a space you remember here we opened the nifty file not the original DICOM so under the slices menu there's a function called insert other images click on it and then set that the DICOM file that you there was used to generate this nifty file so the purpose of selecting those that come is a uh, later we would have dss studio write those region back into those that come file so that those that come file can be used in such core navigation system so we'll open them up since they are from the same brand it should be pretty close to each other so one thing I would do is check alignment because we already upsample this nifty file. So click on adjust registration. If these two files are from the same brand, what I could do is just zero all the translocation and zero all the translocation. So this will be the one of, from the nifty and the one from the Tycom. So you see this. If you just zero translocation and rotation, they should be aligned pretty well. And once you think it's okay, then just, just click the okay button. So right now we have the original Im image that's a DICOM file loaded in. Make sure you set that it here. After loading those DICOM, then we can mark those um, the salamic nuclei region on those DICOM images. The functions under slices, mark regions on slices. So click on this one. This is Studio X for assign the intensity. So 1.0 means there will be a send as the maximum intensity. So click on this one. As you can see here, this studio will mark like a rough regions of this ROI into this, the DICOM. So you, you may notice that there's like difference here. The reason for this one is this region was created from the NFT and has the resolution of one millimeter resolution. But the one that being written to the original DICOM has um four millimeter in the SO direction. So there will be resolution difference that cause a, a, some discrepancy. If we want to have these regions being identical with the DICOM, the way to do it is create all the images and then click on the at this bottom and set that the atlas and load it back again. So as you can see here, if if I repeat this step, this time the resolution will be identical to Cartaicom. So depending on which slice space you are in, this one, the first one will be the nifty, which is one millimeter resolution. And when you loaded the address, this a studio would choose specific resolution to follow to. So make sure that you notice those difference. And then when you write regions to the DICOM that meets your needs. So let's switch back to the DICOM file we loaded in. And then we can check the mark region here. The next step is we would like to save this result back to the DICOM file. So the function will be under also the slices menu. Here's a function called save slices to DICOM. Click on this one. 
And DSS Studio will ask you to assign the original DICOM file. And that's the one we inserted in the first place. So just go to the folder, select all of them, and click open. So if you check those files, you may notice there are additional new files created with a file prefix MOD um, telling us those being modified. So those are a series series of DICOM files that have been modified with the region marked in. So we can quickly check whether the region is really written on those DICOM files. So the way to do it is we could just drag those DICOM in DSS Studio. So this is this one's lower. So let's go up, go to the 18s. So at the 18 size, we could see that the DICOM file has been re overwritten with the region we mark it in, and then save it as a new file. So this set of modified file, you could copy it to a surgical navigation system. And then on that system, you will see exactly the same T2 weighted image with region marked as high intensity. So help you to localize the region. Of course, you can manually draw those regions to do it. The same here. Just open the DMT file. and insert DICOM. So here, make sure you don't insert the original, the modified one, just set that the original one. There are 40 slices, save in 40 DICOM file. So once you load it in, again, adjust registration, Since the nifty file and the diagrams of the same image modality, so let's just override those translocation and rotation. Make sure that both align. Click OK. So for example, if we want to draw like a region, we could have a reference, say the same set sub nuclei, then. So this, and this one created a regions and we, sometimes we will say, okay, I would like to modify it here. So what you could do is there's a freehand tool. You can just draw it like this one. Then you can see in the 3D window, you will see how this region looks like. It's really a thick slice with four millimeter. Um, so you could add it using that click and drag mouse button to draw and to erase is a right click mouse button and you can remove some region. So this free fan will be easy to use when you would like to modify a little bit regions or either reduce some part of region using left click, draw, right click to erase. And once you complete your drawing, the same here, you can just make sure that you slice switch to the DICOM that being inserted. And then save, um, not yet, the marked regions on slices. So click on this one. Click OK. So we see here the region being marked as high intensity in this image bottom. And then you can save it back here to save slices to DICOM and set that the original DICOM. And now DSS Studio will save a new modified DICOM images. As you can see here, if, to see if he shows up. So it's slice 18, we see how it, this being overwrite.
So here are simple steps that you could know any kind of image modality, T1 or T2. This is studio register it. And then those you can register and use it built-in address and output to DICOM. Then the next step is what if we have done the DPS and then we would like to see how things goes well in terms of the laterals and the rows regions. So the data I'm going to here use here provided um, from National Taiwan University Hospital. Um, the acknowledgement of the providing doctor will be described um, underneath in the video description. So here I'm just showing a T1 image that is acquired from a patient before the operation. And after the operation, usually we would have a CT. Those files have been out already saved in empty format. Um, and this mapping is generated by DSS Studio. You could ignore it at the time being. So to check the content of the empty file, again, you can drag it to DSS Studio or you could just open it using the tools or one view image. So this T1 is almost one millimeter isotropic. We don't really need to modify it. The CT here, again, the implant is a little bit lower before placing electrodes in simulation uh, in DSS Studio. You could regrid it to 0.6 isotropic um, here, um, we could just use the original one. It doesn't really matter. So to simulate electrode location, the same, the first step is we would like to open this T1 image. So skip those steps. Those are for DWI. You could go straight to the step T3. Click on the bottom. Let's go to the data set. You have a measure that you switch to Nifty file. So you could see those Nifty files showing up. Open the anatomical, the T1 with the image. And the same here. Click on the Atlas button and DSS Studio run registration. Make sure you have the most updated DSS Studio. Then DSS Studio will register it. It may take a while for first time. Uh, if the second time, DSS Studio is load the register fail. Of course, the first step we could we should do is uh, to check if the registration is going okay. Um, here I set the brain segmentation atlas and then see how the alignment goes. And here, by loading all the regions, you could roughly see all the locations. Now the next step is how could we show the 3D electro location in here? So to, um, to place all electro, first thing we need to have is get the CT image here. The things we could insert CT is under the slice menu, insert other images. Let's click on the post up CT. And again, we need to make sure that the registration is okay. You will see the DSS Studio try to register it. Um, most of the time it should go well, but I would still recommend you check every time. Make sure that everything's okay. So click on the adjust registration. Here you see that it's almost giving a good result. This one's CT, this one's T1. You can change different contrast and click on this button to see if the structure really align well. This in this case, the registration seems to be doing a good job, I'll just click OK.
Next, we will create electrodes under the device menu. Click on the new device button. And here from medical information, we know is 3389 Medtronic. Another new device, then change it to 3389. Let's remove the two other slides. And we can see here DSS Studio create two electrodes at a random location. So the next step we are going to do is to move the tip based on the CT location show on CT. So let's start it on one side. And then to move the tip of the electrode, we'll use move object function under the edit menu. The shortcut is control A in Windows or command A uh, in Mac. So click on this one or use shortcuts, select the tip, drag it. We, and we will need to do it several times at different view so that it gradually match align with the location shows on the CT slides. Here, let's move the slides upward lower to find another tip location. And the shortcut for moving the slides is E and D. So these two but keyboard button will help you quickly go through the slide locations. Again, move it to the location. So drag it at different view, make sure that lies well. You could repeat doing this to make sure that it's perfect. And once you have the tip location aligned, then the next will be the, body, the direction of the electrode. Again, move upwards. And you could move the body. So the here, when you move the body, it won't change the tip location. So again, here, just take some steps to move the tip location. Let's gradually move it until it realign with the CT image. So usually it takes several steps um, to set that the body of the electro and then check with the slides back and forth. So when you set that it, the body, you will see the size of, of the electro is become larger. So we make sure this will make sure that you set that the right location. It seems to be aligned well. Um, and of course, you could do much better than just you did run them in and do a good job. So here, just show an example. So once you have aligned the location, now we can look at the T1. And similarly, we could bring in the atlas here. as a ceramic nuclei and see how we intercept with those locations. And then in addition to using the built-in atlas, we could also use a less available in other tool. So the one most people would like to use is like DBS, DBS. Um, they provided a lot of atlas you in a zip file under this link. So if you go to the DDBS website, they have a user guide. And at the installation page, there's a link provided. You could download a zip file. And if you unzip it, the file will look like this. There's a template folder. And we we'll go into the space, MNI, analysis, 
And there are a lot of different addresses here. So tech, uh, for example, the first one, a head address. Inside, there will be left and right hemisphere. Let's just focus on the left hemisphere going in. And you will see there are a lot of nifty file. Then we could check here. So one nifty file say here, the sub dynamic nuclei. One would be the mask. So if you drag it into DSS Studio, the, the mask would look like zero one. This will be uh, like a region. Another one is probability map. This will be, looks like a volume, 3D volume. See, we can see here, right here, it's a 3D volume. And DSS Studio could use those elders and visualize it together. To use this example, first of all, we could load the mask as region. So here, using the regions menu, pay attention to here, this, those elders are in the standard template space. So we could just open. and then set that the mask file. After loading the mask, we could see how it overlap, whether they, if they are different with the built-in address. So this would be the mask. And to do in the probability volume, what we need to do is each of them as slides, just like we insert a CT. So it's insert on the image. Um, this one is for subject space. You need to specify insert MNI image. Just like here, when we load the mask, we need to open the MNI regions. Here as the slides, insert MNI images, click on it. and then open the probability map. So here, STM probability, open it. As you can see, here, the entire image only shows up some locations where there's a probability. It's really hard to check it out here. So one trick we could do is, first of all, make it Red color in the high intensity regions. Let's just cancel those. And then check the overlay checkbox. Now, when we go back to the image, T1 or either CT, the probability map will be overlay on top of it. So this will help us to check the probability map on a structural image. And of course, we could generate regions based on this probability map. To do this, we could go back to the probability map. And there's a function called new regions from thresholding. Click on it. We'll say a 50% probability and you generate a 50% ISO surface based on this probability map and can go back to the structural image. So in this way, you could make use of all elements available in the, the DBS, uh, whether it's being the mask and you load it in open MNI region, or either it's a probability map and you insert it as an MNI slices and turn on the overlay so that you could be show on these images. And also we could load um, NNI space track. So on DSS Studio website at the data link, we will link to a website created called brain.labsolver.org. Under the tractography atlas, there's a link to a standard space tracks and you could go to the, the first one, 
and download the, the track you're interested in. So here we could say, for example, the projection pathway called the spinal track. But once you download it, you would look like this one. And then there are all files we can load it in. And similarly, under the tracks menu, you can open MNI space tracks and go to the tracks here. We could open the cotospinal track on the left. So in DSS Studio, you could load um, MNI space mask, probability map, or either track volume. And then you would align it using the Wapping field, make sure you align with the subject image. So this is about the EBS application DSS Studio. If you have questions, feel free to email me. Thank you very much.